You are going to love this video. If you're an egg eater, or even if you're not, I have a lot to say about eggs. And I'm not here to sell eggs, nor tell you how many eggs you should be eating. But I am here to say that eggs are not the primary reason why people are dying of heart disease. It's not the primary reason. And I'm gonna explain why. Remember, our liver produces up to 80% cholesterol on its own. We only take in 20% cholesterol. So why is it that those people who eat three, four, or five eggs a day have low cholesterol? And why is it that those who eat no eggs, one egg a day, have high cholesterol? And that's what we're going to discuss. And there's two main reasons. One, it's your liver that's not functioning correctly, maybe from a fatty liver, maybe from your diet, your refined foods, your high fats, your saturated, your trans fats, and inflammation. It's all about inflammation. And that's what your doctors are not telling you about. So if you're having high cholesterol and you're being treated with those statins to keep that cholesterol level down, not only are you affecting problems in your brain and your muscle and other parts of your body from those side effects, but you still have not gotten to the root of your problem. And that's what I wanna help you with today. Just some simple nutritional facts that egg whites are a complete source of protein containing all 90 essential amino acids. They provide 3.6 grams of protein per egg white, making them probably the most absorbable protein of all the foods on the planet. And when it comes to your egg yolks, they do contain healthy fats, including monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. They're also a great source of omega-3 fatty acids, which contribute to heart health and inflammation reduction. And egg yolks are rich in vitamin A, D, E, and K, B vitamins, as well as B12, riboflavin, and folate. They contain a significant amount of calcium, phosphorus, and iron. And the egg yolks contain approximately 210 milligrams of cholesterol. The FDA tells us don't eat more than two eggs, but there still is no research that conclusively states that there's a direct relationship with dietary cholesterol and blood cholesterol. And those egg yolks are important for our brain health, our liver function, fetal development during pregnancy. And it's one of the few natural sources of vitamin D, which is crucial for our bone health, our immune function, and our overall well-being. And when it comes to those antioxidants, eggs are quite powerful within the yolk because of those carotenoids, lutein and zeaxanthin. And both lutein and zeaxanthin are primary components of the macular pigment in our eye where it acts as a natural filter, protecting the eye from harmful high energy light waves, such as blue light, and neutralizing those free radicals that can damage our eyes. And these carotenoids will improve your visual acuity, which aids in sharper vision and better perception of objects in low light conditions. And eggs are rich in choline, an essential nutrient that plays a tremendous role in your cardiovascular system. Choline reduces inflammation and supports the structure of our cell membranes, which contribute to overall heart health and function. And the vitamin D attributes to better heart health, better vessel integrity, stronger immune system, as well as lower blood pressure. And egg yolks contain phospholipids, which has a positive effect on your cardiovascular system, including those potential impacts on cholesterol metabolism and the reduction of inflammation. And in the past, cardiologists as well as doctors focused on only cholesterol. And they've noticed that over time, as I said before, those who are eating lots of eggs and getting lots of cholesterol, but still having a healthy diet, taking care of themselves, not having a fatty liver, those people had low cholesterol levels. And as time went on, they started looking for these inflammatory markers, which I'll get into in just a second. But it's the inflammation because the levels of cholesterol that were considered normal were in the 300s. They brought them all the way down to 200. Why? Hmm. Does it have anything to do with the pharmaceutical market? Absolutely. Because now more statins are being recommended than ever before. And when we're talking about inflammation, we're talking about atherosclerosis in the cardiovascular system. 
This is characterized by narrowing and hardening of those arteries due to plaque buildup, and it's now understood to be primarily driven by chronic inflammation in the blood vessel walls. This inflammation can be triggered by a variety of factors, including high blood pressure, oxidative stress, and inflammatory responses to diet and lifestyle choices. And that's why I highly stress that we need to get away from those refined and processed sugars. They're inflammatory. Not only are they inflammatory, but too much of those sugars gets converted to fat, particularly our bad fat. Not only the LDL, the low density lipoprotein, but our triglycerides. Those sticky fat triglycerides love to accumulate in those arteries. And that is very dangerous. And that's why it's so important to eat your fruits and vegetables, your legumes, as well as getting those omega-3s, those fatty fishes, tuna, salmon, or wherever you like. You can get the ALAs, the alpha linolenic acids, your walnuts, your chia seeds, your flax seeds, or you can go for your fish oils and get them as well. And when we're looking at LDL cholesterol, low density lipoprotein, it's the oxidative modifications that leads to this inflammatory response within the arterial walls, contributing to atherosclerosis, clogging of those arteries. And once it gets inside your arterial wall, it can become oxidized by these free radicals. That oxidized LDL is recognized by the immune system as a foreign invader, leading to this inflammatory response. And then we get white blood cells, specifically microphages, that rushes to the site to engulf the oxidized LDL, trying to clear it out. But as these microphages consume the oxidized LDL particles, they transform into what we term foam cells. And these foam cells accumulate and form fatty streaks within the arterial walls. And this is the early stage of plaque development. And over time, these foam cells die, depositing their lipid fat content within the arterial wall. It attracts more microphages and perpetuates the cycle. The plaque continues to grow. You get this continued accumulation of lipids, these dead cells, cellular waste, as this becomes more complex in structure. You see, the presence of plaque perpetuates a chronic inflammatory response. The body then goes and tries to help it. And by helping it, this perpetuates more inflammation, which leads to more placking. So let's look at fatty liver and cholesterol. Fatty liver disease, especially non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, is a condition characterized by an excessive accumulation of fat in the liver cells. This affects the liver function, and it's associated with metabolic syndrome, which includes insulin resistance, obesity, dyslipidemia, which is abnormal cholesterol levels, and hypertension. And when the liver is overloaded with fats, its ability to metabolize and regulate cholesterol is altered. And an unhealthy liver will produce more low-density lipoproteins, our bad LDL cholesterol, while also struggling to clear excessive fat and cholesterol from the body. You see, the liver is trying to do its job, but it can't. It's overloaded. It's toxic. Too much fat from our poor diet, that excessive refined processed foods. You see, when we take sugar in, a little bit, no problem. It gets absorbed into the cells, insulin secreted, and it gets into the cells, we burn it as energy. Too much sugar eventually gets stored as glycogen in the muscle and liver. Too much sugar above that glycogen storage gets stored as fat, high insulin levels. When insulin levels go up, that's when we start putting fat within our body. So our cells, our abdomen, the visceral fat starts to grow, but so does the liver. It's being filled up with fat. It cannot metabolize and do what it needs to do. So this takes me right back to where I started, the egg. It's not the eggs that's causing the majority of heart disease. In speaking with very dear friends who are cardiologists as well as other experts, they have told me that a vast high majority of people who have heart disease, heart attacks, clogged arteries, strokes, do not have high cholesterol. What do they have? They have inflammation. That's the bottom line. I hope that this video was helpful. May I ask you to please share it with your friends and family, and most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.